All right, welcome to Back to the Frame Rates bonus episode where we are going to just kind of talk about what we've been watching this week with our movie musings and talk about some maybe things going on in the world of film this week. And we're going to just start with what we've been watching. We are here, I should begin by saying we are here with, <laughs> and how are you guys doing, by the way? Ah, it's a standy. Yeah, rocking and rolling. <laughs> No, what I want to say is that we actually came off of our first get together in mm. s- six months. Yeah. We got, finally got to go out and have a social night out. The four of us it was really nice. We don't get to do that very often, but we've been, we were trying to schedule a, uh, we we're supposed to do like a, a holiday themed get together for like like a month ago, something always kept coming up, but we finally had our get together. We don't have a picture. <laughs> I'm so mad about that. The last time we took a picture, remember? Yeah, we did. That the waitress or the waiter, I forget, he took a picture of us, but totally like, you know what that means though, right? I, I don't. That means the conversation was so dope. We right. forgot <laughs> to like. That's you know, right. We were too, in, too invested. Exactly. We were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, also, we went out on a Sunday night, and that we closed that joint. And we totally did. <laughs> it's also it was also night. By the way, I don't want our viewers, our listeners, to think that we were out to like that we're cool. Yeah, no, because no. no, it was nine o'clock at night. That place shut down, and we left like at maybe nine forty after they closed. And like they were just like sweeping the floor around us, and like looking at us like when are these guys gonna leave? You know? yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, we were jerks. Yeah. Um, the food was so good. The food was so good. Mm. Yeah, it's a good place. But yeah, I, I wish we had like a picture we could like share with everyone, but well, we didn't. Oh, well, we're not that good. Can Anyways. Always take a picture of each other and then like, you know, Photoshop it into the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Listener challenge. Who amongst you has Photoshop skills? Chop, chop. Get to it. I can Photoshop, I want, but not like top Photoshop. I can do it. I can it. Photoshop, but we, we don't have anything to base it. Like we don't even have like a, no, it's not going to work. It's not like, it's not like well, two of us, it's not like three of us were there and one of us was missing. We could Photoshop somebody into the picture. We have no picture at all. Doesn't matter. We can, I can grab one of your pictures, one of her, one of me, one of, and then I put you into a restaurant. It works. It's, this is not worth the work. <laughs> it's like, could that be po- Nathan, st- Nathan pauses for a second and thinks, this is possible, as Ellie is trying to convince him that it is possible. But then Nathan looks away and says, no, 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 it's not going to happen. <laughs> maybe maybe ask AI to do it and they'll it'll create it for us. Oh, man. Trippy. Yeah. What I want to do is just talk about what we've been watching this week anything we want to catch up on b why don't you begin tell us some of the things you've been doing or watching this week sure so this week has been pretty movie light for me because i am subjecting my partner to a rewatch of the sopranos because it's one of the best (laughs) television shows ever made and he should watch it so we're we're doing that but he's never seen these you said right he's never seen it it's a rewatch for me he's never seen it and i want to save my relationship so i'm making him watch it (laughs) and we're having a great time so there we go how far along are you into it we that's a good question i think we're in season two right now or maybe mm. we've just started season three we're just binging we're just we're going for it is, um is he, is he into it though yeah yeah he is oh yeah it's a new lifestyle in my house yeah oh, okay. but the other i did go to the movies once this week i went to go see zone of interest which if you've just heard our and uh, our society of the snow episode you will know that my week in movies has been a real bummer real <laughs> depressing movies based on real life events real downer yeah no zone of interest wonderful i saw it at coolidge i don't know if it has a wide release i'm i'm genuinely not sure but it's we've all heard holocaust yeah we've all heard holocaust stories told over the years this is a totally different perspective and the banality of evil and it's harrowing and it's it's all of those things and it's well performed and well done and i never want to see it again Okay. I've I've yeah. heard it's a very divisive film. So yeah, yeah, it's a hard watch. It's a hard watch. Yeah. But it's cool because okay. we lighten things up with the cannibalism movie. It's a... Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
that was the lighter of caps. The, was Society of the Snow uh, the lighter of the two movies? Yeah, yeah, by like a Interesting. lot. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just like just go watch like Spirited Away ten times in a row. <laughs> just like cleanse my soul just, a little no. bit. All right. Do a little sage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like a sage cleansing. <laughs> ridiculous Ugh. i don't know who watched something different <laughs> i i watched a lot this past week maybe me and uh, ellie will go back and forth on what we've been watching okay. so we can kind of like bounce off each other uh, the first thing i want to say i watched you know in, later this week you're all gonna hear our review of society of the snow but what i also did on the same day i watched society of the snow i did a rewatch of alive Frank Marshall's mm-hmm. 1993 yeah. version of the same story. And this film stars Ethan Hawke, Josh Hamilton, Vincent Spano, among many others. But those are the familiar names and faces. Uh, Ellie, I think you said you've seen this as well a while I have. ago. Okay. A while ago. Yeah. So I've, I've rewatched this for the first time in probably 30 years. And like I said, I watched this immediately after Society of the Snow because I didn't remember much about it. And I was really curious to compare the two of these. That's so masochistic. I know. And as you can assume, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a telling of exactly the same story. And it's pretty much the same story beats as you can. But this film... This film, to compare them, what I will say is I think Alive does attempt to do something that Society of the Snow does come up slightly short on. And I, and I, as you'll hear later in, in next week's episode, is that it focuses on less characters. And I had an easier time keeping track of who's who in the movie Alive. Characters with their, you know, they wear their motions on their sleeves in Alive a lot more it's easy to tell what's going on in it. The movie is more interested in the danger and in the tension of the situation, whereas Society of the Snow is more about faith and about the camaraderie and the brotherhood. And it's a much different movie. Society of the Snow is a much better film. I'm not saying Alive is better at all, but I think it's an interesting exercise to watch both of these back to back. And I think they both have their strong suits, but... Alive is definitely the Hollywoodized version of this for sure. Mm. But if I had to say one is a better movie, definitely Society of the Snow is. It's on VOD, so you do have to rent it if you want to watch. The thing is like three ninety nine. Mm. So yeah, Ellie, did you? You haven't seen this in a while, but do you remember much about it? I, you know, I, I'm trying to remember. I I remember the plane crash, and I remember, you know, bits and pieces. I've forgotten there was Ethan. Uh, Ethan that was in that movie. Very young and, Ethan Hawk, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I freaking love Ethan. He's one of my favorite actors. But it's funny because if I start to recall the movie Alive and com- try to compare it to The Society of the Snow, uh, again, it, it's like the story, a true story made by Hollywood. And in my opinion, Hollywood is always going to be Hollywood and it's going to be commercialized. And I don't mm-hmm. like that. And whereas with this director, I forget his name, Bayona. He he's, you know, Spaniard. He's from Spain. He's 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 not part of that club in Hollywood. I feel, you know, mm-hmm. and and it brings something else to the table that, for me, it was more touching than the first movie I saw. It still got me that movie though, like just because it's such a horrible story, but it didn't touch my soul the way society of the snow did yeah yeah i mean frank marshall is not known for the same type of definitely handled stories i mean he did this is the guy that did congo and arachnophobia so yeah. you know <laughs> but two anyways. emotional dramas yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he, he didn't do robert did he <clears throat> Rob Marshall? What? No, no. Rob, what was it called? That movie with the tire that kills the killer tire. Rubber? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rubber keeps coming up on this show all the time. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, didn't rubber. he did not do rubber. Okay. <laughs> but why did you? Why did you Dude, like, I'll never forget. I will never forget the moment, the day, the, the time. Okay. In, 
and the age. Carlos was three years old. He was sleeping upstairs. And I don't know where this movie pops. And I'm like, 2 a.m. in the morning, I'm awake. And that's the movie that comes through. And I'm like, what the heck is it? And I actually watched the whole thing. And I was like. As you should. What yeah. the heck? Yeah, it's a classic. Yeah, yeah, you know, I never knew that a tag could kill me, but it's possible. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Ellie, tell me something else you've been watching. So, keeping it like in the dark side for now, <clears throat> I watched No One Will Suspect the Truth. And it's a I documentary. Don't know what this is. Okay. It's, a, it's new on Netflix. And I didn't know. I, that's how I watch my stuff, by the way. I'm searching through, I turn on Netflix or Max or whatever, and something pops up. Whatever pops up first is what I will watch and give it a chance. And wow. that's exactly what happened with this. It's, you know, it's you weird, play right? roulette with Netflix, don't you? I love Netflix. I, I, I know, you know what I think it is? Netflix is well organized. Yeah, the user experience on Netflix is yeah. pretty unbeatable. It's, it's very friendly. And whereas yeah. if you go to Max or Hulu or, you know, Prime, it's, I feel like it's all over the place and I'm like searching mm-hmm. for things, you know? And whereas Netflix is just so comp- comp- compartmentalized, mm-hmm. so well done that I'm, I'm just a fan of Netflix because of that. But no what's, one would suspect the truth. It's, it's a documentary which really made me angry. And sad with this 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 couple, this woman was kidnapped in the middle of the night and taken out of her house and her husband not her husband, her boyfriend at the time was with her too, and he gets you know tied up. they don't see the guy's face because it's covered and and so she goes for forty eight hours forty eight I think two days she's going missing so at that time, you guys remember the movie Girl Gone, Gone Girl? Yeah. Like oh, yeah with Ben yeah. Affleck. Yeah. During that time, that movie was like big, right? What happened to that lady? I saw so that. She was like a young girl at that time. And the police and the FBI interrogate the boyfriend. And they keep him in, in that place for 24 hours, interrogating him. And to the point that they want to break him and want them want him to say, I did it. I killed her and I buried her somewhere. And they even say it, like you see the cameras. And it's like, you did it, right? You did it, didn't you, Matt? Or whatever his name is. And two days later, I think two or three days later, the girl comes back, was dropped off at her, at the place where she grew up when she was little, which is her father's house. And now everybody's saying like the media, the people on the internet were like, oh, this is a hoax, she created that, and now she's going to go to jail because of that. So now they're hiding because they don't want to... People are just saying that it's a whole, it's a hoax and they created the whole kidnapping. And nobody believes them. Nobody believes them. Not the, fire, not the police department from the, the town that they live in, not the FBI. No one believes it. Eventually... There's a, just to give you the gist of it, eventually a woman cop from a different district and up investigating deeper into this story because other people are coming, other women are coming through that they got kidnapped too. Not kidnapped, but raped. I'm sorry. Can I say that in this, in a, in a, you know, <laughs> anything like, on here. Okay. And, and they got, you know, they got raped and by this person and police, they kept telling the police, there's somebody out there that's doing this to women. The, the police men who carry the story in the town, I forget the name of the town right now, but he even went to say women who are molested from child when they're ch- little girls mm-hmm. tend to want to relieve that. And so they'll lie about it and they'll say that they've been kidnapped or something. He did say that. He said that. And to me, to me, to, uh, I'll tell you exactly what he said. He said, he said, Detective Master said that women who have been sexually assaulted often pretend to have it happen again so they can relieve the thrill of it. This cop does exist. This is not a movie. This exists. And the nerve to say something like that 
Jesus well, eventually, wept. yeah, eventually, this cop woman who investigated deeply into it, it's the one that brings everything to light. Mm. Oh, wow. And they get finally, they get the justice that they deserve that they were never that they realize, oh, shoot, this woman did get violated. She did get killed. She was never lying. Her boyfriend was never lying. Jesus. Yeah. And, you know, she says, you know, if they believed my boyfriend, when they did, I wouldn't have gotten violated several times when she was in the in that person's house. And to shout that the rapist, the kidnapper, was a lawyer that went to Harvard University, I think, and was practicing law. Mm. Yeah. So Ellie, it really got me mad. This the documentary, but it's a. Is this great- is this is this a, the three part series? Do we have the title right? And this is this called American Nightmare? Yes. I'm sorry, okay. I got the wrong title. I wrote the the little phrase that says no one will suspect the truth. The title of the documentary is American Nightmare. Okay, because yeah. I could not find I'm anything sorry. No yeah. one will suspect I'm sorry. The truth that, you're right. I'm sorry. I, I got mistaken. Mm-hmm. It's American Nightmare. And boy, I wouldn't okay. wish this on anyone. But, but as a female, imagine that. They think that you created that story only because at that time it just happened to have that other movie. Yeah. Yeah. There are people who think that way. That's depressing. Did anybody watch anything nicer? Are we all okay? I know. Are we okay? That's why I say I'll start with the dark side, but then I'll go to the light side. (laughs) I I, want to talk about a couple things. Well, I know. I first, there's one more dark thing (laughs) that I want to talk about something (laughs) else. Okay, but th- I'll say this. I'll say this really quickly. All right, this actually kind of ties in to society, the snow, or the, the, the wintry themes that we've been watching. I'm really late to the party on this show because it just wrapped up season five. I just started season one of Fargo. Oh, and, nice. you know, let me let me tell you guys, I, I loved the season of TV, and I know there are listeners out there who are like, "Well, duh." I and I, I hear you. I hear you. But what can I say? I, I am behind on a lot of television, but I finally got there. And what a perfect week to binge on this show, mm. too, because it, we're just ramping up these winter survival films. And this movie, I mean, this series was a perfect accomplice to our, I think, our featured review this week. I do hear rumors that the seasons for the show are wildly uneven, but that's okay. I'm going to push forward. So I just wanted to mention that. But the other show that I started, and I think, Ellie, you can chime in on this, is I discovered Ted, <laughs> on Pe- both. <laughs> which, is, which is streaming on Peacock. And this is season one of the, the first season of this. I've only watched the first episode. I know you've gone ahead uh. on this. But this is the Seth MacFarlane produced uh, TV show based on the movies. There's been Ted 1 and Ted 2 that have come out. And this is on Peacock because this is a Universal Studio production, and it's on Peacock. But wow, this this series I thought would might be like a more di- a diluted version of the movies. I love both movies, but this is just as raunchy and rude as those or those films. So I I'm in on this. Ellie, I, I, you start, uh, you've gone ahead a little bit. Let me tell you this? something about it. I just came across Ted by chance as, as well in Peacock. And I'm like, let me just look at this and see what it's about. Because, you know, I love teddy bears. But then I started watching the season one. And I'm like, okay, yesterday I actually watched two more episodes. Dude, season one was freaking awesome. Season, I mean, season one. Episode, episode one. one was freaking awesome. Episode two and three. Took it to the next level for me. That's great to hear. Okay. And I just could not stop laughing. It's just from the mom to the dad. And, and I, I, okay. I, and I gotta listen, something about the dad reminds me of you, Nathan. Oh God. I don't know. Not, <laughs> not it's just, it's just like, I keep thinking like, why does he remind me of Nathan? Why does not, not, not. Do I have a stick up my ass? Is that right? <laughs> no, 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 that, that, the, the physical part, not the character. 
I, I don't know if I should take this as a compliment. I don't I know. It's a compliment. I'm I think, not going to sleep well tonight. I th- no, <laughs> you are. But like, like he's there's something about him that it's like that's a, a schlub. I feel like that's Nathan. No, that's Nathan. But but schlub. you have to see it, B. But but maybe it's just me. Maybe I just because I just come from being with all of you on Sunday night that I was like, <laughs> like but now that I'm looking at you probably not what made this experience even more rewarding seeing the first episode was that we we just reviewed Society of the Snow and I watched a live and lo and behold there's this amazing oh reference to a live in, in episode one which I have a clip of right here what are the odds though listen that's so funny here it is. Right now, we're just two guys standing here having a conversation. Yeah. About uh, what? I don't know. Um, what's the last movie you saw? Uh, Alive. Which one's that? Oh, it's the one where the rugby team crashes in the Andes in the 70s, and they ran out of food, so they had to eat each other. You're kidding. No, it's a true story. Like, like eat each other alive? Like they're trading? Like you give me your hand, I give you my foot? No, no. It's like some of the guys died in the crash, and then the ones that survived had to eat the dead guys. Oh, man. Yeah, I I couldn't do that. Me neither, man. Plus, it's all dudes, so it's even worse. Yeah, what? It's all dudes. You know, you're eating guys. It's like double gross. Well, I mean, I I would think it would be objectionable across the board. No, no, yeah, it would. It's just like a hat on a hat. So if you were on a plane that crashed, and Tom Hanks and Diane Keaton were on it too, and they died and you survived, who would you eat first? Am I the only other person on the plane? Yeah. What about the pilots? It's an experimental aircraft, all automated. Well, maybe that's why it went down. The technology still needed more study, yes, but the Pentagon was getting impatient and they wanted results, so they pushed up the launch. Wait, why wouldn't they have a seasoned flight crew on board instead of two actors? Oscar-winning actors. Fair enough. These are taxpayer dollars. They need the public's interest or support for the funding dries up. Wait, since when does the military need public support to fund experimental aircraft? Would you eat Tom Hanks or Diane Keaton? I'd start with Diane, and then if I didn't get rescued, I'd move on to Tom. Yeah, see, I think it's weird that you have an opinion one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I love the show. I love the show, and I, I'm all in on this. So I'm happy to hear, Ellie, that this just gets I better love, and better. I love this show. It does get better. You'll see. I mean, at yeah. least for me, it did. I, I got, It's like it could have gotten even better than this. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. That's just, uh, and I'm just so, so sad because it's only a few episodes left, and like, you know, that's it. Seven episode season. Yeah. yeah. So it's not that long. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sad about that. Oh my God. <laughs> the scene any- at the mall. Oh my God. You're going to love the scene at the mall. You, if you love the movies, you're going to love the scene at the mall. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. Anything else, Ellie, that you want to share with us? Well, I, all right, I'm just going to say, I, I watched Through Detective, the new one. Yeah. The new, season four. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about being in the call, right? This, this whole thing is done in a, in a, what do you call that? Alaska, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I'm really, gra- it's grabbed me. I, it's very mysterious. It's very, uh, that we don't know what killed the people there. We don't know what's, we don't know if it's a, an animal, if it's a monster, if it's a serial killer. But I love the whole philosophical thing of true detectives always has that philosophical, philo- philosophical side of it. And I'm loving my favorite actress in it. And the kid, Jodie Foster, is that what you mean? Jodie Foster, but the kid that plays next to her, the, the, the kid cop, he's he's a police officer. I keep watching him and I keep thinking Matt Damon. Matt Damon, <laughs> a young Matt Damon. Honestly. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Great. great. Yeah, I haven't started it yet. The last, I'll just mention the two other things that I, well, I did watch two other movies this week. I'll go through these quickly. So I had heard really good things about this documentary that came out 10 years ago called Jodorowsky's Dune, which is directed by Frank Pavich. Came out in 2013, streaming on Max right now. And this is about Alejandro Jodorowsky, who nearly pulled off directing back in the mid-70s an adaptation of Frank Herbert's Dune. So the problem is, is that this movie came out in 2013 
And the fact is now that we live in a post Denis Villeneuve Dune world. Mm. And this puts an entirely new context on the movie. And even though we're yet to see part two of the story, which is coming out in a couple months, it's clear that the Frank Herbert novel, I think, is in great hands going forward. Jodorowsky's vision for Dune, I'm sure, would have been something to behold because he's a very interesting filmmaker, very visionary filmmaker. And I think this documentary does an admirable job laying out the ideas that he had and taking us on his quest to assemble what's really a dream team of visionary artists, of Avenger style. He's got the guys like Mick Jagger, Pink Floyd, H.R. Geiger, mm-hmm. Salvador Dali, all of these great artists of all different ilks coming together to work on this movie. He was going to do this movie for $15 million in the mid 70s, but it all fell apart. And this documentary is basically Jodorowsky just telling his story about how he was going to make this movie. It's a pretty short film, but it's it's interesting. But in 2013, when we only had the David Lynch version of Dune, Dune, mm-hmm. Dune. <laughs> I think it might have set different with me because we only had that version of it then. But I think even Jodorowsky would appreciate what the Denis Villeneuve is doing with the, the novel now. He he goes on the record saying that the David Lynch movie is is garbage. Also in this in this documentary, <laughs> <laughs> well, he can be wrong sometimes. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. so the last thing I'll mention is you know I'm always ecstatic when my my she was just here a moment ago saying good night, but when my 12 year old daughter agrees to watch a film with me, it, mm. it's harder and harder for us to find common ground on things to watch. Mm. My daughter's into three things right now. Taylor Swift, mm-hmm. Slime, don't get me started. <laughs> don't get me started on this. And her dog, Stella. Aww. And believe me, and believe me, when I wasn't about to sit through a three hour concert film with her the other night, mm-hmm. and I've been subjected to a lifetime of torture slime videos already. Again, don't get me started. All right. But <laughs> the genius that I am. I found a movie about dogs that amazingly we could come together on, which isn't easy because there were two steadfast rules. No dogs are allowed to get hurt or die Mm -hmm. in this movie. Mm -hmm. That automatically eliminates a large swath of films. Sure. You're not going to watch Turner and Hooch or anything like that. And my rule was it can't be mind numbingly stupid. Oh, so you didn't watch (laughs) strays. Great. <laughs> Not strays or air bud or some garbage like that. Sure. So, while researching, I found the perfect film. And it also happened to be one of my all time favorite comedies. So we watched Best in Show. Oh, <laughs> nice. I've yeah. never seen that movie. Some of it was a little over her head, but ultimately <laughs> she, she did love it. So this is the 2000 Christopher Guest directed comedy about a fictional dog show, the the Mayflower dog show that stars all of his usual suspects that you know from his films like Catherine O'Hara, Eugene Levy, Parker Posey, John Michael Higgins. Parker Posey's great in that. Yep. Michael McKean, as well as Michael Hitchcock, Ed Begley Jr., Jennifer Coolidge. And and you can't forget Fred Willard as Buck Laughlin, who's doing the play by play. The entire movie is basically improv. And these actors are that are cast, it is just they're the best, the absolute best at, at doing improv in this movie. It's it's unbelievable. My favorite, as you just said, it, it'd be it, it's Parker Posey and Michael Hitchcock, who play this married couple and they treat their dog like their child. <laughs> they are a glorious hot mess the two of them on screen. I could watch an entire film of these two actors parenting dogs. The film they has work together a... in shift. Sorry. Did, that, that's the man from the, it's his wife in that movie. Is that the man from that movie, the Christmas movie with McCulkin? Oh, okay. Yes, Catherine O'Hara. O'Hara. Yeah, yeah, that's O'Hara. Yeah, 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 yes, yep. yes, yes, yes. That's okay. um, like I say, this film hasn't lost any of its luster in the last 24 years. I found myself laughing my ass off just as much as I did the first time I watched it. And I was happy to see that my daughter got a kick out of this too because 
she could appreciate just the ridiculousness of the characters in the plot. Oh, yeah. And there's more I need to tell about this because this film is streaming on a platform titled Watch TCM. Have you guys heard of this? No. Okay. It's a free over the top streaming app like Netflix or Prime, but it's loaded with amazing films that Turner Classic Movies has secured streaming rights to, and it's all ad free. And That's all, amazing. If all you movie, movie nerds out there, it looks like each film you get that TCM opening bumper in which you get hosts like Ben Mankiewicz giving you some of that production <gasps> insight. That's the so, juice. I'm in love with this. It's like a mini Criterion channel available oh, for free. Awesome. I strongly encourage anybody who's into this to just check this out. Get the app. It's called Watch TCM. I, I'm just looking at it right now. I found yeah. it. Yeah, it's free and it's loaded with great movies. And you get Ben Bankowitz telling you all about the movie and the other TCM hosts. So, but I like Ben. But anyways. <laughs> I, I was just like, it's like double bonus. That's score. cool. Yeah. So that's, that's my, my, the great news from this past weekend. I got to see a great <laughs> movie again cool. and I discovered a, a free streaming app ad free with great classic movies on it. Oh, intro from the TCM people. So, there yeah. was light out of the darkness. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes. And that concludes, I think, everything I saw this week. <laughs> More you know. So, yeah. Amazing. I don't know. Any, so, am I missing anything that anyone else wants to add that they watched or did this week? I mean, I watched Fool Me once, but I didn't like it. So, I'm not recommending it. <laughs> <laughs> it's on That's Netflix. Huh? What, what, what was wrong with it? I... I really tried to get in. It's, it's a limited series, and I tried to get into it, and it just didn't. I did finish from beginning to end. It just didn't click with me at all. I don't. I don't know. I just. It's like that sometimes. Yeah, you know, it just it felt short, like flat for me. The only, the only interaction that I liked in the whole series were the two cups. The policeman, their relationship. I I thought it was funny and I really liked that. Other than that, I didn't like anything else. Just mm. didn't. Hmm. Okay. Next didn't week like we'll do anime. better. Yeah. Next <laughs> next week we'll do better. Yeah. Not a lot coming out in the theaters for a couple of weeks. I mean, this is we're still in the January so doldrums. Yeah. I was kind of looking at upcoming new releases. I'm looking at the box office as well, which. It is it is lean right now. Mean Girls topped the box office with like eleven million in it for the second straight week. Beekeeper, Wonka's holding, but there's not the only new release this week was a movie called ISS. I don't even know what that is. What is that? Hmm. It's from Bleecker Street Studios. It made like Oh, I actually think I saw a preview for this and I thought it looked really good. So I might go see that. I can't tell you how much I don't really want to see Wonka. So ISS it is. I, You know what though? Wonka wasn't bad. It, it, it surprised me. I can me. wait. I can wait for you, that you one too. Wait. Oh, you can totally wait. You can totally wait. But it mm. was, was, it was, I, it was better than I thought it was going to be. I told it was better right. than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, ISS, Ariana DeBose, and Chris Messina. That is the movie I'm thinking of. I do want to see it. Yeah, I want to see Origin, but I mm. it's, it's only in selective theaters, and I it's don't have uh, one near limited. Me. It was in 125 theaters this past week. It finished 15th in the box office this weekend. Which one? It's pretty good. Origin. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a great story. I think I'm looking forward to. To, to the movie. I don't know if they're going to release it on in a streaming platform, so I want to catch it before it goes away. Because mm -hmm. it's going to be one of it's one of those movies that is very impactful. For me, so. Yeah. Well, I just want to take a quick look at this upcoming weekend. We The only real wide release coming out is a movie called Miller's Girl. 
from Lion Gate Studio. I don't know much about it. Actually, I know nothing about it. So I'm not going to pretend I know. Netflix has a new film called Badland Hunters. I kind of looked a peek at that. That did not look interesting to me. The Underdogs comes out on Prime Video. And Masters of the Air is a series coming out on Apple TV+. Plus. We are in the doldrums of January. It's how it is. And it isn't for a couple of weeks yeah, until yeah. we start getting February 2nd, a couple of weeks. Argyle comes out in on February 2nd and Scrambled. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but yeah, we got, we got some time. We got us. We got to sit it out for a few more weeks. And then Madam Web. Yay! <laughs> Sorry, we have exciting things to watch for yeah. our podcast. We do. That's so why we'll be kept we... entertained. Exactly. All right. Any other last thoughts? Anything else we want to talk about? No. Everyone just no. wants to log off and go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty we, much. we can do that. All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening to our bonus episode this week. And I, unfortunately, we, we won't be able to talk about the Oscar nominations until next week, but that comes out, that's going to drop before this episode mm-hmm. lands, but I am looking forward to see what gets nominated. Oh, yeah. uh, we'll have to do definitely- The text thread will blow up. I can yeah. feel it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But maybe next week's bonus show, we could do a little Oscar nomination reaction. Yeah, that'd be fun. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.